everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In the past few weeks there have been a number of minor bits of information that have been released about the upcoming Wheel of Time TV show, but at this point there are so many minor things that it's worth compiling a list of them and spending some time talking about what each of these things means and maybe what might change in Amazon's adaptation of the Wheel of Time. Also, before getting too far into the video, in case you missed the live stream a couple days ago, we are currently celebrating the one year anniversary of the channel's existence. I'll talk more about this at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned, but there is a pretty cool celebratory offer going on to celebrate the one year anniversary, so stay tuned for that. Also, real quick shout out to the channel's sponsor, audible.com. They have been a sponsor of the channel for some time now, and what's really awesome about what they do is they support the channel, and they provide a really cool service that I know many of you guys use. If you haven't checked out audiobooks, it's a really amazing way to listen to The Wheel of Time. Uh, if you've never done an audiobook before, it's really easy and it's a very cool experience. And you can get one for free. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nabless and you can get a free audiobook of your choice and check it out and you really, really help out the channel by doing so. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers through The Shadow Rising. If you haven't finished the first four books of the series, please watch at your own risk. So like I said earlier, there have been a number of minor announcements over the past few weeks with regard to the Wheel of Time TV show. Let's take a moment and get you up to speed on each of these minor announcements, and then we'll talk about what it might mean for the show going forward. The first piece of information we have comes from an article in the Daily Telegraph written by Duncan Lay. The article is behind a paywall, so if you want to read it, I will have it linked below, but you will have to pay for it. But it does feature some very subtle yet unconfirmed information about the show, as well as an interview with Robert Jordan's wife, Harriet, and an interview with John Doherty, the head of Tor Books, the publisher for The Wheel of Time. Probably the most important takeaway from the article is a small, subtle comment that The Wheel of Time TV show would have higher budgets than Game of Thrones did on a per-episode basis. This is stated without any citation uh, for confirmation or anything, so take it with a grain of salt. The rest of the article, though, is fairly legitimate, so it kind of implies to me that this could be true. So if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know that this isn't really news to me, uh, as I think this was pretty much a given from the get-go. Not necessarily because the Wheel of Time is special, but more so because Amazon spends money on its original productions. The latest Amazon originals have been receiving $8 to $12 million budgets, per episode, uh, which dwarfs the six million per episode that Game of Thrones got in its first two seasons. So assuming this is true, what would it mean for the Wheel of Time TV show? Well, for one, it means they can build the sets and create the CGI and animatronic work necessary to make the show feel believable. It'll help build out that world, and that's a big part of the Wheel of Time. It also means they can continue to spend on high quality production support, which to be frank, they have already been doing if you've been paying attention to the hires they've made. Whether the show ends up being high quality or not, it can't hurt for the budget to be high, and it looks like we are getting that. The rest of the article addresses Robert Jordan's newly released book, Warrior of Altai. Check out Daniel Green's review on the book if you want to know more about it. But there are a couple of Wheel of Time references in the interviews. For one, Harriet states that she isn't sure what Robert Jordan would think of the TV show. She basically comes out and says that there are going to be changes and that no author ever wants to see their work changed, but they are excited for the adaptation. This is essentially saying and confirming something that we already knew. The story is going to be changed in some way. We just don't know quite how yet. Some of the later information though that we'll talk about in this video will give us some things to speculate on, but we'll get to that later in the video. The bottom line or my biggest takeaway from this is again, we already know it's gonna be changed. I know there are a lot of you out there, including myself that really don't wanna see it changed, but keep in mind it is an adaptation. These things can work out very positively, they can work out very negatively. I'm going to wait until we actually see a finished product before I judge, but I am excited. The last piece of information in the article is actually pretty cool to me. John Doherty from Tor Books, the publisher of The Wheel of Time, stated in the interview that since the show was announced that there's been a 20% spike in purchases for The Wheel of Time books, and that they expect that trend to continue as it gets closer to release. He cites that the G Game of Thrones books spiked massively when the show came out, and they expect the same with Wheel of Time. That's really exciting to me, mainly just because I want to see more people reading these books, and it's awesome to know that there are people out there picking them up just because of the show. So our second small piece of news is the addition of two people to the Wheel of Time IMDb page. 
Now, forgive me if I butcher these names, but Yarit Four and Enric Ortuno have been added as intimacy coordinators for the show. For those of you that are unfamiliar, an intimacy coordinator is a role that is used on television shows and movies when there is nudity or a sex scene involved. This typically actually required by the union for the actors. Their primary role is to help the actor or actress feel comfortable with the scene and to help choreograph it. This is fairly common and it does not mean that they're going to be filming pornographic sex scenes or anything like that. This could be as simple as a scene with buttocks showing or the back of a woman uh, of a topless woman. However, we can infer a couple things from this. For one, it's likely that there will be nudity and some sex in the television show, as that's just common in television shows these days that are on pay-for-service networks. But also, this is just more reflective of the source material. There is a good amount of nudity in the books. I'm not going to rehash this discussion here, as I've done it a couple times in other videos, but this is essentially some confirmation that they are not going to make this the G-rated version that some people think Wheel of Time is. The next piece of Wheel of Time news is the posting of a few audition tapes for what is assumed to be the Wheel of Time series. These are a few actors and actresses that were trying out for various parts. Again, in a show that we assume is the Wheel of Time, a number of the names have been changed. The names, the places, and even some of the phrasing has been changed to make it seem like it isn't the Wheel of Time, but it's fairly obvious that that's what they're getting at. Now, before diving into these, I want to say that it is very common to have line readings that are not going to be in the show when it comes to auditions. Also, clearly things have been changed in these lines, so we don't know that these lines are canon or if they're just there to be read for the audition. These were done months and months ago, so these are not current. The scripts have likely changed, and it's very likely also that these are fake scripts or fake lines that they are reading just for the purpose of auditioning. That is very common in television. However, that all being said, Amazon did have these videos pulled down off Vimeo after they started making their rounds. So it does lend some credibility that the links and the content are about the Wheel of Time, but it doesn't confirm that this is the actual script they were reading. I'll link a video here uh, on YouTube where, the, where you can actually still watch these videos as of the posting of this video. Um, but I imagine that'll probably get taken down at some point too. And I'll link an article that describes them in case those videos do get taken down. But let me give you a summary anyway. There are a couple videos that I've seen, uh, one for Matt, one for Nynaeve, and one for Pot and Fane. The scenes with Matt are basically of him dicing and talking trash to those that he's dicing with. And then there's another scene where he's complaining to another person, probably Rand, about their journey as they approach a city. The scenes with Nynaeve are of her sneaking up and threatening somebody who appears to be Lan. And then Lan asks her to heal who we think is Moraine, so that they can go find the boys. And then there's a scene where Nynaeve appears to confront Moraine in Emmons Field, and they have some verbal sparring. The Pat and Fane clip is just him haggling with Matt, it seems, and there's much less to that one. What I take from all of this is really simple. If true, these things could actually imply that they are following the plot of the Eye of the World fairly closely, but just fleshing out more of the main characters early on. The major changes would seem to be Nynaeve sneaking up on Lan and an injured Moraine, which seemingly happens after Shadar Logoth, implying that Nynaeve doesn't meet them in Berlon, but after they are separated. Knowing the episode titles that were released earlier, we can infer a couple of the changes that they might be making, again, assuming these clips were reading the actual script. For one, given that the second episode is titled Shadows Waiting, and then the third episode is A Place of Safety, I think it could be implied here that they may be skipping Berlon entirely. The only real need for Berlon to be visited is to meet men, and this could be done elsewhere. Outside of that, it's it really is expendable, and a place of safety could be meeting back in Camelin, which would make sense with the other titles. Again, all of this is wild speculation, but it would make some sense. Certainly let me know what you think of that change if it ends up being true in the comments. And the last piece of Wheel of Time news that leaked is the casting of three people in various roles for Two Rivers folks. On the website for their casting agency, Two actresses and one actor were given credit for roles on the Wheel of Time TV show. And once they became public and everybody was looking at them on the internet, they were promptly removed. But not before the community took notice and screenshotted those credits. According to the reports, Juliet Howland was cast as Natty Cawthon, who is Matt's mother. Juliet is an experienced television actress with quite a few television titles to her resume. It's really extensive. Check it out. And then Christopher Scurif, I'm probably butchering that, was cast as Abel Cawthon, who's Matt's father. Again, he's another very experienced actor for both television and for film. Now, these would appear to be fairly minor roles for the first season, as it would be assumed that they would really only be a part of the show for the first episode or two. 
but these roles, especially that of Abel Coffin, would be expanded upon when they reach the Shadow Rising storyline. The last casting choice is the one that will certainly generate the most discussion and might be the biggest change. Helena Westerman has been cast as Leela Abaro. You could see her sitting next to Marcus Rutherford in the table read video. So this is as close as we're going to get confirmed without hearing from Rafe or Amazon. Now, obviously, the last name being the same as Perrin, we have to make a couple assumptions here as to who this character will be. And I think there are a couple options. Number one, she's a sister of Perrin's and that they're going to give a role to her in the first episode to help flesh out Perrin's character and his family, etc. The problem with this is that she's a lot lighter in skin tone than him. And so if they were brother and sister, there would need to be some type of explanation for this. Possibly that Perrin wasn't born in the Two Rivers. Who knows? Uh, again, they might be trying to play up which of the three actually is the Dragon Reborn. Uh, all that being said, I think this is the least likely of the options. Next option is that she is married to Perrin at the start of the story. There's a character by the same name that shows up briefly in The Shadow Rising. She is described as being a girl that Perrin once thought he would marry, and after he left, she ended up marrying someone else. He meets her very briefly at the Alcim farmstead. They might be setting them up to be married and give Perrin a bit more story from the get-go. Obviously, this will require changing the story later. And they could be wanting to do a couple things by giving a parent a wife from the get-go. Number one, they could be setting off to kill her on winter night, having her die in the first episode and kind of upping the stakes of the Trollocs attacking the two rivers. They could also be simply setting up a plot where Perrin must leave his family behind. And this is something there that just makes that choice very difficult. Um, and making Moraine whisking them away in the middle of the night a little bit more impactful. They could also be thinking a few seasons ahead and having her get killed by the White Cloaks during the events of Shadow Rising, along with the rest of Perrin's family. Either way, I think it is probably most likely that Helena Westerman will be playing Perrin's wife. So those are the small pieces of news we've been getting. I'm curious what all of you think about the news and what effect it might have on the show. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And quickly before we end the video, I want to come back to that one year anniversary of the channel and the promotion that we're running. In celebration of the channel being around for a year, we have a special design t-shirt available right now with all the rest of the merch. If you don't know already, the channel has merch. Get your Nabless merch by looking below and all the links. Uh, and of course, since we're already in election season here in the US, I figured why not get our election merch out there? You can get your very own Make Randland Great Again t-shirts among other different objects, but more importantly, you can get a shirt at no cost by signing up for the Dreadlord tier on my Patreon. Patreon is the absolute best way to support not only the channel's growth, but the website that we're building and the community that we are trying to build around the show and the books. Your support on Patreon will help me bring on the staff I need to continue to grow this stuff. Take a look at the Patreon if you want to help and get your free t-shirt by signing up for the Dreadlord tier or above. And speaking of merch, you can find the other stuff here too. You got the Chosen shirt. These uh, may or may not be Queen DR mugs. Hmm. Either way, check it out. And thanks again to all of you who already support the channel. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to get more Wheel of Time content. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out. Think you're in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?